Have you been looking up, like, horse proportions? suspicious lights in my bedroom where are they coming from what <laughs> sorry oh sorry. god um i don't know a ghost yeah or? what kind no. of suspicious lights it's like the reflection of like if a light is hitting off of like a mirror or a watch oh. or something but literally mm-hmm. nothing in my room is moving Unless yeah. it's coming from, like, outside the window, but I'm on the second floor and, like, uh-huh. high up. And there's nothing outside my windows, so. I don't know. There's just weird lights in my room. Real distracting. It's an alien. Yeah. It's the aliens. Do we want to get started? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whatever. Um... I'm not bored by you. I just woke up from, like, a four-hour long nap. Yeah. I mean, it's okay if you're bored by me. I'm not. I I had to go to the DMV today. I'm sorry. that's the worst. Welcome, comrades. You're listening to The Triad, where we're spooky but sensitive. I'm Shelby. I'm Hannah. And I'm Shannon. Woo! Yay! Flawless. I'm so good at this. (laughs) Guys, we're professionals. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any announcements today? Listen to this microphone quality. Yeah. Anna has a microphone. Ooh. Yay. Yeah. Um, Thanks, I'm in uh, Chicago again, finally. So I might have random background noise, like ambulances and stuff. But after I move to a different apartment, that should no longer be the case. At least not as bad. Nope. So, I'm still in Podunk, Southern Illinois. Yeah. I'm only here because I'm moving next week. And then oh, as- yeah. as- assumingly I'm starting classes in a month, but in person. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. I have Did class. I send you guys my petition? Yeah, I signed it. Wait, okay, you yeah. have a petition? <laughs> yeah. She put I it sent in the it chat. The yeah. Group chat. In the town yeah, chat. Chat, please. Things. About my dumbass school. Yeah, that's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Ugh. we had a town meeting last night, and it was horrible. Oh, no. It was just, like, they didn't answer any of our questions. They would start to answer it, and we, would, we were all on, like, a group chat, all my friends, yeah. school friends, and we were like, yeah, they're going to answer it. They're going to tell us about funding. And then they're like, and anyway, we'll be washing bathrooms twice a day. And we're like, <laughs> not what we wanted to hear. Like, thanks, but also not helpful. Yeah. My school, the, um, like, the undergrad main thing, I don't know how to refer to them, because they also have graduate programs, but, like, our parent school, I guess, they released a schedule, which I think includes whether or not stuff is on campus or in person, but it explicitly said this does not include the law school, so I was like, cool, which I didn't assume that it did, because nothing that they sent me really applies to me, they just send it to everybody on the email list, basically, so... I still don't know. Um, one of my st- classes also doesn't have a professor still. So. Cool. And it's, we start school in literally a month. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't I, know what uh, we're doing. <laughs> I'm going to spend my weekend figuring out what exactly is going on. Yeah. Um, Swick, because I can't. Yeah. yeah. I need to figure it out because I might have to quit my job. Yeah. Which I'm not sad about, but. Also, you still need to know one way or another. Need to know, because technically I'm supposed to give them 30 days notice. That's not gonna happen. I'm That's sure. really long. Well, cause you know it's a daycare, and they're like, well, we need time to find someone, so it's not as rough of a transition on the kids. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, but they're two. <laughs> well, they're gonna forget about me in about two seconds. I Guaranteed. still think it's, I just think it's bullshit that you have to give notice that you're leaving, but they can fire you at a moment's notice, so, like, I don't support that anyway, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's fine. <sighs> I mean, don't it's send socialists to law school. This is well, what ends actually, up happening. <laughs> I do, actually, 
You know, I'll talk to you when we're not recording. Yeah. But. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, well, if you, Ugh. I didn't put it in an episode folder because I'm That's trash fine. at my job. But no, if you fine. want to go into my research folder. <gasps> Yay! Sorry. I will not give you. <laughs> Any spoilers on any future topics because I do everything last minute. <gasps> but we're yes. gonna be talking about the Denver International Airport today. Oh, if you wanna Yay! pull up the PowerPoint. Let me make this big. It should yes. be at the top it says present. Oh my god. I'm so it's just sad. a bunch of pictures on the PowerPoint. It's not an exciting PowerPoint. There's no that's like, fine. Or I mean anything. that's how mine is too. But I didn't even like have mine in presentation mode, and I'm not gonna do it now either. I have it split screen so that it's easier. <laughs> oh yeah, I have split screen going oh, on because otherwise I can't read my notes. Yeah, Macy um, just licked my heel, so that was fun for me. Hi, buddy. Um, nope, that's crazy. <laughs> she, if you have bare skin, she licks it. <laughs> Hi, honey. But yeah, anyway, Denver International Airport. If you don't know, I'm sure you do. Actually, what do you guys know? about it i just know that there's that creepy painting and like there's a statue outside that's the devil horse mm-hmm. i know about there might be secret tunnels yes yeah that's all okay. i got well we're going to touch on all of that um basically the denver international airport has a million conspiracy theories that surround it Um, I'm just gonna go over some of the, like, more popular ones or the ones that have the most information or possible, um, like, evidence behind them. Uh, but before we get started, my information came mostly, um, there's an article by Colin St. John, um, on Thrillist.com, and then... There's an article uh, from OutThereColorado.com and an article by Cameron Bailey from UncoverColorado.com. And then I also was on the Fly Denver uh, website for the airport. Just that's where I got a bunch of pictures and um, like the airport's stance Mm -hmm. on things from um, on the PowerPoint. What slide are we on? (laughs) <laughs> just the title slide. But if you go to okay, slide number two, that is a picture of the airport. Um, basically, it's like the entire top of it is like these tent fabric covering type things. Um, some people say it looks like teepees, um, but the guy who designed it said it's supposed to emulate a mountain range and like the fabric coverings are supposed to look like the white caps of the mountains and all of that um I mean it looks cool yeah but and obviously Mm -hmm. because the airport itself has so many conspiracy theories around it um there's some uh having to do with its general appearance I don't touch on those because I thought they all sounded stupid (laughs) that's fair (laughs) And you know I love conspiracy theories, so if I say it sounds stupid, then it's stupid. Not really, <laughs> but... Um, okay, so just some general information on the airport. Um, Denver did have an airport before, but they like built this one um, because the other one just wasn't able to handle the amount of traffic they were getting and everything like that. So this airport opened on February 28th in 1995. Um, As they were building it, it had a lot of delays um, and it went two million dollars over budget. Hmm. (laughs) Which... A little bit of change. Wish I had that kind of money to go over budget on, but... Yeah. Nah, not me. Um, So it already was kind of a lot of people in town were like, but we already have an airport and this one's costing a lot of money and taking too much time and blah, blah, blah. So people were already like not super pleased with the airport, but you know how people are. Yeah. I have a really Um, random question. Yeah. Does it, is it literally just called the Denver International Airport or is it like St. Louis where it's the Lambert Airport and like every other airport I've ever heard of? No, this one is the Denver International Airport. Interesting. That's not really interesting. I'm just curious. I do remember that. 
had a different name, but I okay. don't remember what it was. Interesting. Yeah, Hannah, I do Can remember I when there was a tornado. <laughs> um, ba, 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 yeah, ba. and then they didn't actually fix it for several years. <laughs> so there was no, just... No, they just, like, boarded up the windows. Yeah, they just boarded up the windows for several oh years. <laughs> this St. Louis airport. Oh, Lambert. Because, like... <laughs> I think it was like 20, yeah, it was 2016. I went to the, the tornado was airport to try to get, no, no, no. It, I know the tornado was before that, but yeah. I tried to go to the airport to get, um, to exchange money to get like oh. a different currency. Uh-huh. And there were still like boards over the windows. And I was yeah. Like, I'm going to fix this. The tornado I, was like 10 years ago. It was in 2013. They're never the going to finish Lambert. that airport. I mean, I went to go pick my friends up from there last week. Oh, no, it was 2011. Sorry. Either way. Um, Sorry. Continue. No, you're good. But I went to go pick my friends up from the airport last week, and the parking deck, like, every single floor of it, it's four floors, I think? Yeah, Every four single floor of it, they had, like, 90% of each floor blocked off, and then it's like the way you turn around in the parking deck so you have nowhere to go so you're going the wrong way in traffic (laughs) and you're just like what would you like me to do in this situation (laughs) and like could you please detail it in a they all just stand there like the construction workers are all just standing there giving you the judgy eyes and i'm like well i don't know what i'm doing yeah i think initially whenever the tornado hit they were just gonna use it as a jumping off point for renovations if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. I might just be pulling that out of my ass, but <laughs> Well, um, even if you are, that is what they ended up doing. Yeah. So there may have been more than one. Yeah, there were two. That's why. There's one in 2011 and one in 2013. So that's uh, why. Uh, that's part of the reason why it's still <laughs> I mean, it's been 7 years. So they yeah, should they have should. fixed that one, well, but... It really just <laughs> replace a window with, is what... I know. I know. Yeah, it hit two of them. Or it hit in two years. Sorry, I'm tired and I'm still mad. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and the first one even was $25 million in damage. And that they weren't able to fix that by the time another one hit. And I don't know if it hit the same part of the airport or not. You know, so I don't know if it caused damage to the same place or if it caused damage to a new part of the airport. Well, the airport's not that big, so... No, it's not, so... That's, like, the most exciting thing to happen in the Midwest. I know! When someone has a tornado. When there's a tornado. Or, Shelby, you were here for the earthquake. That was fun. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. In eighth grade? That was so weird. Was it seventh or eighth grade? shocks in the middle of math. I think it was seventh grade. Was it seventh grade? Was it seventh grade? I'm looking. I don't Hang on. remember. All I know is that like the main earthquake happened in the middle of the night or like three yeah, in the morning. Yeah, it happened in the middle of the night. And Wait, if you guys had an earthquake in what year was this? In seventh grade, in it was either 2006 2007 or, seven. or 2008. Yeah, I don't okay. remember. If it was 2007, then we had one in Montana too, and that's when I. Well, I mean, that's obviously when I was in seventh grade, also, but um, we had one in Montana. It that, was in 2008. Why did I think it was okay. in seventh grade? No, I don't know. Sorry, it was in 2008. But yeah, um, yeah, it hit overnight. And then the next day, I was flying to Texas to go to another cousin's wedding. And whenever we landed, I had a bunch of text messages from people from like, hey, did you hear that? Like, did you feel the aftershock? And I was like, I was on a plane. So no, I did not. <laughs> well, no, because like my sister came in in the middle of the night and my room already shakes if it's windy and it's illinois and it's flat so it's always windy and so my room just shakes a lot um and so i just figured it was like a a storm or something like that and i was half asleep so i didn't bother to care and my sister comes in my room and she was like hey are you okay and i'm so out of it and it's eighth grade and i'm a snotty little brat so (laughs) i I literally yelled at her to shut up and get out of my room and Then I woke up the next morning and I was like, why did you come in my room? You slept through it? She was like, because there was an earthquake. I I wanted to make sure you were (laughs) fine. And I was like, oh, well. I say you slept through it. Lead with that information (laughs) this time. Yeah, I say you slept through it, but I wasn't on sleep meds yet. So I was already awake whenever it started shaking. 
But now yeah. I sleep through tornado. I've slept through multiple tornadoes and really bad thunderstorms now, so I can't really say anything about sleeping through <laughs> <That's> stuff. <comforting. laughs> No, do you remember, I mean, Hannah, do you remember our junior year of college? There was like an insanely bad storm that almost became a tornado. I slept through that and I woke up, I slept through it with the windows open and I woke up to a bunch of text messages from people like, did you go into a basement? And I was like, why? <laughs> why would I have done that? I texted that? you like a month ago about a storm that we had uh-huh. here. Yeah, I slept through home. that. And I was like, wow, that storm last night, like literally sounded like a war zone going on. And you were like, we had a storm last yeah, night. Yeah, I slept right through it. You live five minutes from me. Please uh-huh. live somewhere where there's not like intense weather. <laughs> hey, does that place exist? Not know. anywhere I've ever lived. Yeah, <laughs> um, I woke up in college to the tornado, or not the tornado sirens, to the fire alarm in the dorms. Oh I my did wake up to that. To break into my room. Hold on. So I that's had the fucking good. flu when the when we, there was a fire drill when I lived Gross. in Sun Villa, and I lived on Ugh. the 15th floor. I know. Floor, and they made me take the stairs, and I was like, I, I cannot breathe. Was that the one that was at like one o'clock in the morning too? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, like super was late at night. And, God, that building was disgusting. <laughs> that building, my yeah, ooh, and we lived well, on. I lived on the tenth floor. Yeah, that that yeah. was haunted. Your your room was haunted. It was. It used yeah. to be a retirement home. Yeah, and the, my room, my roommate, my RA made the point of telling us about once a month to remind us that it was haunted, probably because it used to be a retirement home. Because yeah, I had stuff fly off shelves there. Yeah. 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 I did not have a haunted room. So this is why I'm a trash teacher, because I cannot manage to keep us on topic (laughs) at all. I'm the one who got us off topic, I think, so I'll take the blame for that. (laughs) I mean, it's fine. I had to go look you into the room anyway, and she thought my microphone was a scratching post. Yeah. I'm so hot. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just sitting here, and I'm like, wow, we've been through two bullet points. And we are... Half an hour in. Great. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're God. so good at this, guys. We also, were doing so well. The- like, the past two episodes, we've been doing so well at mostly keeping on point. Like, there have been tangents, but not, like, really bad. And then, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's my episodes, okay? I'm aware. I it's just fine. can't keep us on No, it's top fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Third bullet point now. <laughs> okay. Shit. Literally third bullet point. Alrighty. So the airport during the time that it was like being built, it was um, when Denver had their first Hispanic mayor and their first African American mayor because it took so dang long yeah. for them to build this <laughs> airport. Um, and both those mayors were okay. First of all, the Hispanic mayor's name was Frederico Pena. And the African American mayor was Wellington Webb. They both have cool names. I probably I love both of them. Wellington Webb. That is an amazing. He name. literally sounds like someone straight out of Harry Potter. He does. <laughs> I love like, it. That or a Marvel comic book or something. Yeah. Oh my God, he's like the fifteenth iteration of Spider Man. <laughs> I would believe it. His last name is Webb. That's if you what hear I said. Bell going off, it's because my cat is being psycho right now. Um. But yeah, so um, during the time that it was being built, uh, it was during those two mayors' um, reigns over the the city. Um, But both of them really made an effort to hire minority workers and immigrants to work on the airport project. Um, So a lot of the things that we'll touch on that kind of ignited conspiracy theories... um, (laughs) A lot of them are just different cultural things, but this is America, cool. and we're dumb. I so. think that's cool. Um, so. But yeah, so <laughs> they really wanted like the art and basically like everything around the airport to be really culturally culturally diverse. So yeah, um, but yeah, if you want to go to the next slide. That looks Behold, ominous. <laughs> Lucifer. Devil. The horse. Okay. Um, is his name seriously Lucifer? <laughs> no, 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 okay. no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So technically, it's named Blue Mustang. It's okay. It's giant, 32 foot tall, 9,000 pound 
blue horse. Okay. That serves Why? as the unofficial mascot for the Denver airport. Kind of like the um, bean. The bean isn't really called the bean. It's called Cloud Gate, but it looks like no a one's fucking bean. Call it that. Which the it looks sculptor like a bean. I know the sculptor of the bean hates that name, but he is like a known jackass. So we call oh it the gosh. bean still I just to make love him mad. This stuff on him. <laughs> Because basically, like, the entire art community just trolls him constantly. Dick it. He's so <laughs> awful. Yeah. So that's a and huge I part of the reason it. why we still call it. I mean, plus it literally looks like a giant metal bean. But it we're does. also just being smart, Alex. So. I mean, I'm here <laughs> for it. Um, but yeah, so this giant blue horse, which I was going through trying to find pictures of it. And I'm sorry, but, like, that thing is way too anatomically correct if you... Looking at <laughs> multiple angles it is somebody put a lot of detail into that and I'm like sorry but you have too much time on your hands I don't want to bring up what's Mothman this? again but <laughs> what's this thing on his ribs are those just his ribs oh, those are his ribs yeah but like and then what's he's also that got like lightning thing? bolt like pattern what the fuck yeah I don't I don't really know what that's about because uh, we'll get into it, but the artist died, so no one really knows yeah. what he was going for. Yeah. That horse dragged him to hell. I uh, looked up more yes. pictures just to get different angles. This picture doesn't really show. It's very blue. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It also has oh, demon I went with, eyes. Like, the super ominous picture just yeah. because it was cool. Yeah. Um, it has demon but eyes. Yeah, it's and basically is... like a bright royal blue. Yeah. And its eyes glow red. What Which the hell? some people say that's so that like planes don't hit it because it is thirty two feet tall. But I'll accept also, that. Why to a point? Would, why would you make yeah. its eyes glow red? Um, also, why would you put it in an area that it could get hit by a plane? Right, like, like why? <laughs> just why? There's just a lot of questions. Um, but yeah, so his eyes glow red. He's giant. He's blue. It's made out of fiberglass, um, but it's still nine thousand pounds. Um, and the guy who made it actually ended up dying because in 2006, when he was making the piece, um, a part of the head broke off and severed an artery in his leg. Holy shit. So, literally, the whole I'm not laughing because it's funny. Oh my god. That's horrible. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I just like, found a picture of the horse's go. butthole. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, way too anatomically correct. Like, it's on a website called my420tours.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Colorado website to have. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Um, but yeah, so, um, they kind of, like, finished it off. It was almost done when the artist died, um... They finished it off and installed it and everything. Um, but yeah, the mascot of the airport did kill its creator, so there's that. That's not a good omen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, the horse itself doesn't have a lot of conspiracy theories around it, other than people think that it's like a harbinger of death and destruction well, yeah. and doom. It killed a person. And all the things. Um, and passengers have been known to have panic attacks um, upon seeing the horse, which Because usually... it's butthole. If it's 36 feet high, <laughs> how big is its butthole? Too big. Can someone please do that math for us? <laughs> is it at eye level with a um, tall human? <laughs> um, probably. <laughs> um, oh, man. But yeah, I mean... That's funny. Actual normal people say that the panic attacks are caused because of Denver's turbulence. It's so which, bad. <laughs> as Shannon knows, is yeah. terrible. Oh god, it's um, so bad. I mean, you are like high altitude and everything. Like yeah. That, but and like I fly like I don't fly that often anymore and I haven't flown as much as you two, but like I have flown multiple times. That was the worst turbulence we were out of our seats it was horrible that's awful oh it was oh so God. bad throw your hands in the air scream 
pretend it's a roller coaster. Yeah, that's basically, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was with my sister, who is afraid of heights. And well, there's I that. mean, she wasn't sitting, I was sitting in the window because she won't sit in the window on a plane. But still, and like we weren't with our, why weren't we with our mom? We weren't with our mom. I don't remember why. I feel like they drove and Allie and yeah, I flew. your mom and Mark drove. How do you know Allie this better flew. than I do? Yeah, I do remember that. I think. Because it was for a there, wedding, but you and Allie had to stay for school had, like, or school work or, or something. something. Right, that's what it was. Okay. God, yeah. how do you guys remember this better than I do? Well, I don't know, because I have zero memory of anything. I was going to say, like, I don't yeah. have my own memories, but it I can was, remember that about you. We were life. both in college, and so we couldn't. And it was in September, I think, so we couldn't Because I remember miss. Allie made you, like, almost. Oh, like, yeah, now I remember. Yeah, because she was going to school at Umsol, which is, like, 20 minutes away from the airport, so she wouldn't let us leave until 45 minutes before the flight took off. Oh, my God. Don't even. That, that gives me so much anxiety. I still have anxiety about <laughs> it, and it was, like, seven years ago. It gives me anxiety. Yeah. I took she... my friends to the airport on Tuesday, and their flight left at 10 o'clock. They boarded at 9.30, and I was like, all right, so we're going to leave my house at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, she's not allowed to because we were the – literally we were the last two people on the plane we almost missed the plane so so yeah she's i still have anxiety about it (laughs) yeah she's not allowed to to, like to decide when we leave for the airport anymore oh god i was so mad and i wasn't on my oh yeah that's why i was so tired i wasn't on my sleep medication yet so the night before i also didn't sleep yeah yeah because you were staying with Allie, where yeah Yeah, i was staying in her dorm because it was just easier yeah and Mm -hmm. then i had to park in like the closest parking garage. Yeah, so you had to pay. A and it was like it was like eighty four dollars to park. <laughs> I would have made Allie pay the whole thing. <laughs> oh I god! I love your sister, but no. No, she's not allowed to deter. To yeah, like I said, she's not allowed to decide that when we leave for the airport anymore. She gets to. Oh my bill. god! It was horrible. Oh. I will say one thing about um, that my dad told me because I was. Just thinking back to Allie's fears, because I'm really afraid of flying, too. <laughs> She's it's not like, afraid of flying. Of the... She's just afraid of heights. Well, I'm afraid of heights yeah. and flying, Hers are so separate. They're distinct from each other, which is interesting, but continue. You're up high both times. I know. I don't understand. Her it's whole thing is, thing. I mean, she asked to go to Pikes Peak the last time we were in Colorado. Her whole thing is, she doesn't like looking down and seeing nothing. That's her whole thing. Then why would you go on top of a mountain? Well, because, like, it's not like a, you could stand in the, like, there's, like, room up there to walk around, and so she could stand back yeah, from a... Yeah, there's a gift store. Yeah, I know. She could stand back from, like, a safe enough distance, and she wasn't worried about it. You know? It... Well, what I was going to say is that my dad, who is an Air Force veteran, um, when I was really afraid to fly overseas, just because, like, the thought of being, you know, in a plane yeah. crash in the middle of the ocean really freaked me yeah. out for some reason. That's yeah, That's fair. Fear. Yeah, that's completely <laughs> valid. <laughs> the way he calmed my fears or thought he did at least was that he told me oh sweetheart you don't have to worry if you if you're in a plane crash at that altitude you'll be jelly by the time you <laughs> I was like thanks dad <laughs> oh my god I'm sorry I love your dad so much <laughs> um, oh, to, to lead us back to <laughs> the Denver airport oh, I clicked on my 420tours.com <laughs> and the, for the three of us to go to a custom sushi and joint rolling class, it's only $550. <laughs> it's only $550. It's oh called Roll J's and Sushi. I just... Oh my god, Hannah! <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's... That, that is on this website, on this 420 tour. Is that too obscene to use as our teaser picture? <laughs> I don't care what we use. Feel free. <laughs> Hannah just uh, sent in our group chat <laughs> the picture of the horses. But Listen, I'm okay. not like... And genitalia, because those are there too. Look, Shannon, you talk about Mothman's butt. I know. But blue oh my God, like It this. doesn't have... This is amazing. Hi, May. I know, buddy. It's hot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at the I bottom. Know. I see. That's the first thing I saw. <laughs> oh, my wow. God. You're such a bird. <laughs> oh, my God. We can get shirts. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god. Okay. All right. Anyway, I um, I had to turn my ceiling fan on because Maisie and I are dying. Wait a minute. And I'm the one who edits There's anyway, a- so I'll work around it. Ouch. There's oh. a video game. What? It's called Blucifer the Doom Horse of Denver. Oh my god. <laughs> How did I, in all of my research, not find this? I don't know. You need to go on 420tours.com. <laughs> this has some amazing information. <laughs> all right. Well, if they sponsor us, maybe I'll take their CC you, and joint role. I just back. Googled it. You, like, destroy, you Denver, destroy Denver as the horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I know what I'm doing tonight. Is this like a... Hang on. I'm trying to see if I have to pay for this or if I could just play it. <laughs> oh, it's like a phone game. Okay, okay sorry. Anyway, Go ahead. It's a phone game. <laughs> about this horse, because it kind of ties in and so we can be done with this horse, uh, one of the theories about him is that he's going to serve as the mount for one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Well, duh. Have you seen it? Right. Which one? Like, who do you think? Um, um, I feel like be on a it's blue? not war. Mm-mm. No. War what? wouldn't start in Denver. No. I could see... What are even the four... What are they? It's war, I can't even remember what they are. Famine. Famine. And death. And death. death. Okay. I mean, his name is Blucifer, so I kind of feel like it should be death. I like death. Death or pestilence, because yeah. there's something very wrong. That horse is sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he's got, like, the lightning strike. Yeah, pattern or whatever up his going butthole, on. like <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, or if we're in the Good Omens universe, it could also be pollution. I could see that. So that's sure. why I had to ask because the last interaction I've had with the Four Horsemen was Good Omens, and those are not the traditional Four Horsemen. So well, I yeah, because they did pollution instead of pestilence. <laughs> yeah, because because we have disease under control more so than we <laughs> used to. <laughs> 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 Hashtag twenty twenty. <laughs> Anyway. Do we want to move on to the Yes, next? please. I'm going to have to cut yes. out so much shit. Oh, my shit. God. We're on the third slide. I know. We're 47 minutes in. It's fine. Third slide I'll three. We're going to talk about the gargoyles. Does he have two tongues? I, or is that just a, the way it's... What? Does it have two tongues, or is it just the perspective? That's just the perspective. Okay. Um, Sorry. Um. Anyway, so the gargoyles... Um, are located in the baggage claim they were created by artist terry allen um there's a couple different ones but i mean they're all just different takes on a gargoyle type figure they're all sitting inside suitcases and they look down on the people as they claim their baggage which is real funny because they spent a crap ton of money on this state-of-the-art baggage claim that doesn't work. Of course it doesn't. Cool. <laughs> Basically, if your luggage doesn't get lost, it comes out of the baggage claim in shreds. So they we... don't even use the, like, belt system for it Interesting. Anymore. Yeah, we didn't because check our it... bags because we didn't fucking have time, so I did not experience <laughs> this. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I don't like checking my bags anyway because of the fear that I'm going to lose my bag. So, anyway, gargoyles. <laughs> we're going to yes, finish they're coming. God damn that, it. The gargoyle that we're looking at is coming out of a suitcase, which yes. I don't know why, but that's, like, really freaking me out. Yeah, not a fan of that. <laughs> well, yeah, so this guy, Terry Allen, um, the artist who created them, he put these gargoyles inside suitcases. He was commissioned um, back when the old airport was still open. Um, and then it somehow got transferred to the new airport. It was basically like he was going to start working on that one and they were like, just kidding, we're building a new airport, so you're going to build it for this one sort of thing. Um, but so he met with the committee, um, that was doing all the artwork and all that kind of stuff for the airport. And he said it included, and this is a quote of what he said, airport people, art people, and even a nun. It was right off, there was a religious aspect to it. Um, And then later on in uh, one of the articles I read, it said that this nun, her name was Lydia Pena, um, and she was a sister of Loretto. Um, Sure. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But basically, she had spent her whole life in, like, the arts and she had been like an art teacher and she was really big in the art community in Denver and so she was the one who kind of 
curated and like brought together all these artists so that's why she was there uh she was actually important she just happens to be a nun but so it's interesting um, that he's you could do both well i'm just interested hannah said you can do both (laughs) um yes you can find you a nun who could do both yeah um i just think it's interesting that like she wasn't there acting in a capacity as a nun so like I just think it's interesting that he's saying, like, there's a religious aspect. Like, she wasn't there acting as a nun. She just happens to be one. And the only one who really said that. Yeah. That I could find. And he, I think he kind of just threw that in as his, like, artist um, throwing this in because it was my inspiration. Because he said he went with the gargoyles because the religious feel of that like committee meeting inspired him to go with gargoyles because the airport made him think of cathedrals and it's it's weird artist think i say that as yeah. someone who does art but um that no we're weird I, how the weird connections he i don't made. understand Basically, he, like <laughs> he like met with this committee there was a nun there and he was like oh this building reminds me of a cathedral because it's a gathering of people in a large building and lots of windows i guess i don't know Um, were they meeting in the airport because like airports don't look like cathedrals i don't well that one does kind of i mean if Eh, you like squint and tilt your head (laughs) (laughs) if you're on drugs i just if you're if it's, you just went to that 420.com <laughs> tours sushi and J rolling class, then that's yeah. true, yeah. <laughs> and yes, it looks like a cathedral. Like, um, yeah, I don't but know. But yeah, so that's really the um, only like religious aspect I can really kind of connect it to mm-hmm. is him being like, I saw a nun, I was reminded of cathedrals, and I put gargoyles in the baggage claim to watch over the passengers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. <laughs> but yeah, so that was kind of like his idea behind the gargoyles. Um, he wanted them to act as protectors over the people, um, tr- like all the people going in and out and all of that. Um, but and most... that's like the original purpose of gargoyles, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because that's what they act as um, on churches. They're to keep out the evil spirits and demons and all of that. Um, Because they're basically... The way this artist put it, he was like, they're the good demons that keep out the bad demons. And I was like, that's not how that works. A demon's a demon, but yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, But yeah, no, they are there as protectors on churches. And so he wanted them to kind of act as protectors for the people in the air interesting yeah I, all right look whatever <laughs> look yeah do what you want <laughs> anyway <laughs> what i don't understand <laughs> but um but most people see them as bringers of doom and destruction as they do with the horse because they're gargoyles and they're freaky looking and to just like look up in the middle of a baggage claim when your luggage comes out shredded to bits and you look up and there's <laughs> and this there's gargoyle there's a demon coming out of a different of a suitcase, <laughs> that like, isn't shredded how down. dare he <laughs> right yeah so um it's a little little spooky a little weird um but again not anything like super crazy as far as conspiracy theories go most people just see them as a bad omen um and the airport itself has kind of because there are so many conspiracy theories around the airport they've kind of just like taken it in stride at this point um for a while they were really annoyed by it but now they kind of just go with it and so they actually have um like an animatronic gargoyle in the baggage claim that they added in and it like tells you about the different theories and stuff at the airport no thank you i'm okay without that (laughs) right i'm like i don't need an animatronic gargoyle to tell me things like that um i just think it's kind of funny and ironic that like these gargoyles were put there to protect the people and it's in the baggage claim and then the baggage claim literally just shreds everybody's stuff yeah (laughs) Uh, or it just straight up disappears yeah (laughs) Um, Ugh. but yeah, so that's that on that. You're a jingly kitty or puppy. Yeah. Oh, that's my cat being 
annoying as usual. I know, she's so cute. She's precious. I love her. Um, oh, Peppa thought I was talking about her. Cat. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Maybe he's asleep. <laughs> You're a little gargoyle. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to go to the next slide, because um, the gargoyles, I mean, they have like minimal theories about them, but basically all the stuff in the beginning are just kind of like the weird things about the airport. So, oh my the, god, is that a Fresno Nightcrawler? I hope so. Look, it does it look bit... like one. Okay. Um, but anyway, so these are some of the markings that are found around on the floor in the airport. In the different terminals, they have just these random markings along on the floors. Um, and most people believe that <laughs> they symbolize things. Uh, and here's where people get weird, okay? Some people believe that the symbols found on the floor uh, point to a new strain of hepatitis that will be used in biological warfare. Um, the thing that says gold and silver? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's okay, what that so, like, is. There's gold, there's silver, and one, hepatitis. Well, the one that says gold and silver, like, I mean... You can tell it's like a mining cart, and then it's got the periodic table um, symbols for gold and for silver on this mining cart. But apparently people are stupid, but um, that's not the hepatitis one. People think that that one is related to the Freemasons, which a lot of stuff in this airport is tied back to the freemasons um it could which, also be like the history I'm, of colorado which had yeah. gold and silver mines for a yeah, long I mean, time and that's what it is and yeah. then like the <laughs> other picture i put on here and these were just two of the ones that i found um because a lot of them were good quality pictures this other one um that looks like it has the fresno nightcrawler on it the writing it underneath does. it a lot of people say that that's like code um and that it's, like, again, that it's pointing back to either this, like, biological warfare or that it is uh, something to do with the Freemasons or, uh, like, the New World Order and all of that. But the writing is all Navajo. So it's so just no. people <laughs> being stupid and racist at that point. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, I, I mean, it's all, like, all the writing I... All the symbols, um, if they're not the periodic table ones, because um, those are all related to basically just Colorado and its history, um, the ones where it's the writing and, oh, sorry, I had to burp. Um, the ones where it's the writing and just like the little symbols above it, those are all um, words from Navajo. So, and they usually are things like different metals or different, um, just like things that are important to Colorado and the Navajo people, basically. Um, so. So the theory that it's symbolizing a new strain of hepatitis that will be used in biological warfare, who exactly are they thinking is going to be utilizing this? Because this is in an airport. That is municipally owned. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, well, see, part of that has to do with the tunnels and uh, secret base that are possibly underneath. Right, there. okay. So we can ignore my question then until we move on later. Yeah, okay. I mean... I was just wondering. As with most conspiracy theories... Oh, some people also think that all of these things are alien language and... Because apparently Native Americans are now aliens. Um, <laughs> it's fine. But, yeah, they think it's alien language. And so they think if it's not the hepatitis strain, it's a different something that aliens are going to use in biological warfare. And that's why they're using, like, the periodic okay. um, table like, element symbols but i'm trying to apply like, but to the aliens it's a different yeah. meaning it doesn't mean gold and silver it means blah blah and i'm like okay but so now you're talking about aliens i'm trying to apply logic to something that is obviously not logical so that's uh -huh. what's the problem on my end 
Um, <laughs> oh, also, I just looked up what that phrase means in that picture on the right. It means Tallow River in yeah. Navajo. I was just curious as to what it meant. Yeah, I couldn't remember, which is why I didn't say, because I yeah. had two pictures with writing, and one of them was the river one, and then another one said White Rock. Yeah, so, yeah, that one's um, um, Tallow River. I couldn't river. remember which one I had gone with. Yeah, that one's the river. Okay. So, I mean, even translating it, that has nothing to do with, like, no. anything you just said. <laughs> no, nothing at all. Oh. And so, it's... Like, I just... <laughs> all the things that, honestly, like... All the things so far, except maybe the horse, because the horse is just freaky, no matter yeah. what we talk about. Yeah. Um, and even when we talk about, like, the creepy paintings and everything, like, everything basically has a real explanation for it. Mm-hmm. And so it's one of those where I'm like, I love conspiracy theories, don't get me wrong, but if there's an actual explanation for it, then there's an actual explanation for yeah. it. Especially like, something like this. Where there's... If it's an unknown thing and you can't find any meaning behind it whatsoever, sure. then yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool, aliens, 100% down for that. Yeah. But if people are like, no, that's my language, I live here, this is what it means. Yeah, you're just being racist at and that then point if you're... for you yeah. to just sit there and be like, no, I think it's aliens and biological warfare, I'm just going <laughs> to look at you and be like... But so you're an idiot. Good to know. Um, <laughs> and you're racist. Let's just uh, no, just no. So, like, I put the floor markings in here because there's weird theories about them. But if you actually even know the periodic table of elements and know what a mine car looks like, mm-hmm. you're just like, nah, bro, yeah. that's not a thing. Yeah, and I mean, I. Yeah, I'm all for a good debunking on this show. That's always going to be fun, you know? And I feel like you should be bringing up the theories that are blatantly wrong or stupid or something. (laughs) You're covering all your bases. and it's like, yeah, the horse is creepy and, like, is it going to be the horse of one of the horsemen of the apocalypse? 100% yeah. down for that. Believe that. I like, don't even think, like, within my it own... people to have panic attacks? <laughs> well, looking at the picture, I yeah. have panic attacks. So 100% yeah. believe that. Gargoyles are weird. Believe yeah. that. But if someone's like, no, that's my language, yeah. I'm not going gonna... to hmm, I think you're wrong. I'm going to believe the person who says it's their language. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I'm all for you having theories about weird unknowns but that's not a weird unknown so anyway moving on if you want to go to the next slide that is a picture of the um (laughs) dedication stones what i said freemasons yeah yes yeah so this is why a lot of stuff in the airport gets uh, kind of tied back to the Freemasons and I'm not getting into all the stuff on the Freemasons because I value my life and they scare the crap out of me but yeah so this is a picture of the dedication stone um, that was put in during their like dedication ceremony for the whole airport in 1994 um, and then the airport opened in 1995 blah 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 but Um, underneath this stone, there is a time capsule that they put in. Um, but the stone and then the whole ceremony were basically, um, funded by the Freemasons. Um, because it's not uncommon to have the Masons involved in large public facility openings. Yeah. Um. I mean, they are basically just, like, a men's club. Also, I'm sorry, I am going to go on a tangent <laughs> about the Freemasons. Okay. But it is, like, my life goal, except that I do value my life and nobody, please kill me. But um, my life goal is to figure out what exactly the Masons do. I know two people who are Freemasons. I know people yeah. who are Freemasons and they won't they, tell me. They follow the rules like they're supposed to. <laughs> Rude. Little brats. I know. But also, part of my thing with it is, is it's a like basically a men's club mm-hmm. from what we do know about it, and men can't keep secrets. No, they can't. So the can't. fact that they've been able to keep a I secret know. for like hundreds of years <laughs> weirds me out. Yeah, like, there's shady business going on. 
I'm not here for it. Yeah. Except that I am. Someone please tell me what the Masons do. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Hold on. Hannah, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, you're fine. I was just checking. I'm just... I'll tell you when I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just get worried that we're going to lose connection because, yeah, I was just checking. Thank you. Um... But yeah, so they had a dedication ceremony for the airport on March 19th, 1994, and that's when they put in this time capsule. Um, The time capsule supposedly includes a credit card, the Colorado state flag, um, opening day newspapers for the airport. Um, Someone said that it contains a viewer's guide of Beavis and Butthead (laughs) and a ball from the first Colorado Rockies game and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Basically, there's just a bunch of stuff related to Colorado Mm -hmm. um, and the time period. So 1994, 1995 time period. um, I always That kind of stuff. Get, like, Beavis and Butthead was, like, huge in the 90s and I always forget that. Same. Like it was I read so that huge. when someone said that, like, like in the article, I was like, "Why would they do a viewer's guide of Beavis and Butthead?" And then I was like, "Oh wait, show it was, was the so '90s." Huge. Like, I mean, even in like Allie and I were just watching Clueless the other day. Like, she turns like Cher turns on Clue like that turns on Beavis and Butthead, and like, you know, if you watch that without knowing like the cultural context to it you're just like why is this person watching that show right, but then you're like everybody watched like, that Cher show would never do that yeah but then you're like but she would have she totally would have was big yeah oh god it's, yeah <laughs> weird uh, but yeah so there's this like whole time capsule um it's in the ground as time capsules usually are it is set to be opened in 2094 um so 100 years after it was put if we're still here. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure the world's going to end by then. But Yeah. Um, and it's covered by this dedima- dedication, I cannot speak, dedication marker and capstone, which was donated by, or not donated, but it was made by the Freemasons. Um, so that's why the capstone has symbols that are associated with the Masons because it is sealed with two pieces of granite that were made by them for the airport. Again, it's not uncommon to have them involved in openings of large public facilities. It kind of makes sense, but also, what do they do? No one knows. I, it's weird. I don't also, know. the ins- yeah, and I mean the Freemasons have their own conspiracy theories that come along with yeah. them, <laughs> and I don't have time to get into all of that. But like the big main one is the whole New World Order, which basically is them taking over the world. And I all just of that. listened to an entire audiobook today about um, fascism, and New World Order is such a like <laughs> it's such a stupid concept. It I'm is. sorry. No, I mean, you're right. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that's like the biggest conspiracy theory around the Masons that kind of exists. And so obviously anytime the Mason symbol shows up anywhere, people are like, oh my God, they're part of the New World Order. Um, And it doesn't help that the inscription on the stone says the New World Airport Commission, which people have looked up and it doesn't exist. Um, so people are like, what's that about? Um, so according to the airport, um, basically in 1994, the New World Airport Commission did exist. It just doesn't exist anymore. But when they wrote the inscription on the stone, they have like forgot a comma, I get, apparently. And so it should read new comma World Airport Commission. That's still weird, but... Yeah, it's it, still weird. Yeah. It still doesn't really make sense. No. But that's one way to write it off, I suppose. Um, I'm, I'm still with the people who are saying it's the New World Order, New World Airport Commission, Secret Society, all that fun stuff, just because I want to believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just but weird. New World Order has, like... It has like very heavy fascism and nazi Mm -hmm. connotations it does it does for sure 
Um, so, it's like code word. Oh, I'm for not like... saying I like believe in the new world order and want okay, to be a thing. <laughs> I was like, Anna Shelby, got <laughs> wait. No, 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 no. I'm saying I like to believe in the idea that there is a group of people trying to do this. Yeah, like devoid of the context. That sounds fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that. how to phrase yeah. it to yeah. make it sound like I don't support them. I just believe in the conspiracy that they exist. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even so much that I believe in the conspiracy that they exist. It's that I think it is interesting to believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird and complicated. Mm -hmm. I don't actually believe very many conspiracy theories. Yeah. I just really like to read up on them. Yeah. A lot of conspiracy theories, if you apply one ounce of logic, they completely fall apart. (laughs) Yeah. So, like... One of the articles... (laughs) Um, it, like, straight up, this guy, like, interviewed an author, um, who's a real heavy on the conspiracy theories, Mm -hmm. and he was, like, bringing up all this stuff, and I didn't even, I couldn't even read it, because I was like, bro, you crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, again, I'm all for conspiracy theories, but bro, you crazy. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's it's one of those things where, obviously, like, I don't want a new world order to actually exist or have people believe in it because it's very much not a good thing, but I also see why it's a conspiracy theory because it definitely could be a thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, anyway, um, one conspiracy that's related to the capstone that um, is kind of separate from the whole Mason idea is that if you touch it the right way, it acts as a keypad that connects to aliens. Supposedly. <laughs> I'm just gonna say I, no. <laughs> look, okay. I love alien people. They're the best. They hold, they're like, they're like flat earthers. They just believe I know. in what they, they believe. They believe so wholeheartedly. <laughs> And I live in southern Illinois, so best believe I believe in aliens. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> we talk, yeah, we people. talked about it with Hannah's, you know? Like, but, like, yeah, like they didn't, no one right. installed a keypad at the Denver airport to talk to aliens. Like, no. And then just, like, <laughs> stuck the Mason Shannon, symbol is your city on, on fire? Hang on. Again, didn't even notice it. <laughs> <laughs> um... While we're paused, no, because fine. we should probably take this out, because I bet my math is wrong, but I just did some math okay. to it. see oh god, how big that butthole is. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you been like, be, is that what you've been doing this whole time? Have you been looking yes. at like, horse proportions? <laughs> Seriously, I've been on this, you know, this might be wrong, because I think horses get bigger than this. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so I, I was on, like, a bunch of veterinary sites. <laughs> uh, this is going to be wrong. This lo- this doesn't look right, Hang but I did on. math, and it it should be... Please send me a picture of your math, and yeah. I will Shelby can confirm check the or math. deny whether you did it yeah. right. Yeah, Shelby can check the math. Okay. Uh, it's not really... Okay. It's It's bad. <laughs> it's bad math. Um, just tell us. According to my bad math, that that butthole has a diameter of one foot. Oh my and god! Point seventy four. Oh my god! I mean, I could see I it, could though. see it with how tall the freaking statue is. Does that sound right? I could see it. I don't know the math to check it, but I could see it. I yeah, will send, I'd have to I do the math now. myself, like, but I'm pretty sure, like, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I can't send it to you. Why? Oh, I'll just put it in the drive. Yeah. Um, I can't send it over Discord. Oh, oh wait, okay. no, duh. I'm so stupid. We have a group chat. We do have a group <laughs> chat. Like, just um, text it to me. We have, like, five different methods of communication. <laughs> Okay, so six feet is the size of an average horse. Okay. And 32 feet is the size of that monstrosity. Okay. So it is at a scale of 5.33. Okay. Okay. And then a horse's butthole <laughs> is 10 centimeters, roughly. That that could be wrong. <laughs> I couldn't find a correct answer. So then I put that into feet, and then I multiplied it by 5.33. I'm sorry, Google didn't have I an mean, answer for that? This math... It did it! Yeah, this math seems... 
correct. In, like, I mean, so far it yeah, sounds right. The theory seems right. I'll take it. So it's almost two feet. It's one and three yeah. quarters feet in diameter. Again, I could see it. I could see it. And I have Discord All right, up. so what we're saying is we have to fly to Denver and then... <laughs> Measure it. Take a measuring stick. And a ladder. <laughs> and a ladder and figure oh, out this Oh, man. Horse. I have relatives in Colorado, but they would not do this for me. They would not go to the airport Rude. just to measure this. <laughs> what kind of relatives are they? Trash. Because I tried to look up blues of her butt. <laughs> Let me tell you, that did not come Okay, up. I'm not cutting any of this. I hope you're aware. Okay, whatever. I just, I'm just uncomfortable just, with explaining I'm my really, math. I, I think your math is your 420 website. You think... My 420... Oh, they might have it. Hold on. I think your math is right. Like, that seems like a correct way to go about doing this. Also, I feel like you could just measure it on Oh my god, a picture listen. How about, what? Do they what have it the... on the website? No, oh. but it says that um, thick thick blue veins cover its face, torso, and basketball-sized scrotum <laughs> hanging just below its tail. So if okay, it's so scrotum, it it's sense. basketball size. Yeah, then I think. I mean, that's roughly a basketball. It's well, it's probably a little bit smaller. Than so, a okay, so it's smaller than that. Yeah, I'll accept that. Not by much. I mean, well, we're I mean, talking about diameter. Yeah. So like, I'll accept that. Cause it's freaking huge. Mm-hmm. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Okay, anyway. I'll accept that. So like Man. I have yeah. Discord so. one real quick, sorry. So I have my double monitor thing set up again and this time it's actually gonna work, which is nice. So I have Discord open on my laptop and then the presentation and the outline on my other monitor. And so on Discord, all I can see in the chat is the picture of the butthole followed by the picture of the costume. So I was looking at it while you were doing this math and I was like, I think that's right. <laughs> Oh it's the only thing in the chat like it's the newest thing in the Sorry chat about. and i you're have it up wrong. just to keep an eye on craig and make sure he's still doing what he needs to be doing you're not wrong oh man oh my goodness <laughs> um so anyway back to this capstone in the mason i'm sorry <laughs> i really that was just bothering me honestly <laughs> you did the math on that <laughs> Uh, I'm an English major, so, like, <laughs> I'm sorry that it was incorrect. Oh, man. But I don't think it was. No, really 100%. My I am I going think you're to right. check your math. I think you're well, right. The number, the number I got for a horse oh, is, man. I don't even think it was for the anus. I think it was for the, <laughs> the large intestine. The 10 centimeters, oh, it's small, uh, though. Or 10 well, centimeters in diameter, do you mean, for the small intestine? Or the length? Yeah. Okay. I don't no, know. No, because the length is, like, three feet. Okay, I was going to say, like, that's not right. <laughs> Hang on. I don't know. The, the width. I don't know. <laughs> Look, Can a veterinarian please? We're going to have to go on incognito mode. That's literally that's what, what I'm doing I'm right now. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. what I was on because I was like, there's so, gonna, like, some weird shit's going to pop up. There was no, a couple of like um, questionable things. So I just Googled it and the seven and a half to 10 centimeters is a small colon diameter, but like that has to go somewhere. So I don't yeah. see why... The there butthole was no diameter. I was on three different veterinary yeah. sites, and there was no information about horse butthole size. Yeah, so like, <laughs> but I don't see why it would be that much smaller than that because it needs to be roughly the same size, or at least like, well, probably a little yeah, bit smaller. I mean, with your sphincter and everything, it's gonna be a little smaller. Yeah, but I mean, we can split the diff and say it's like six. You know. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Let me plug that into my. Yeah. <laughs> to my. I don't know. Uh, we're just guessing. Algorithm over here. <laughs> This is my favorite thing we've ever done. Okay, six (laughs) centimeters and two feet. Oh my god. You're an hour and a half. I don't care. This is amazing. I was in not a great mood before this, and now, like, I feel so much better. (laughs) Well, glad we did it. Oh my god. I love it so much. Hannah and her bad math. Times. Your Google search. Oh man. It's still a foot. It's okay. still gonna be a foot. Okay. Yeah. I'll ex- yeah. But it's smaller. It's like it's not two feet this yeah. time. It's just one. A foot I mean oh four. Like that seems fine. I mean, like that one seems, foot sounds yeah, right. That seems to me, fine. Honestly. With how tall the foot is. If your scrotum is basketball is. size <laughs> I mean how big is your butthole gonna be? <laughs> Can that please be the text for the teaser picture? <laughs> 
Yeah. The teaser, the teaser picture can be my man. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This is seriously my favorite thing ever. Oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> we literally could have just talked about blues. Seriously, we could have. Oh I man! Don't need to do any of the rest of this research. Nope. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's talk about something else. God, this is gonna take okay, forever. Back to this capstone, I have like one. Oh my god, it's nine o'clock here. It. Oh god, I forgot you're an hour ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I took like a four hour nap. Yeah, that's true. I was mad at the DMV. That's fair. Oh my yeah. gosh. Okay. Well, I have one more note on the capstone. Basically, the Grand Secretary of the like Mason Lodge of Colorado, the MW Grand Lodge of Colorado. Um, he stated the Freemasons had nothing to do with building the Denver International Airport. The only involvement was a ceremony that was performed for the dedication capstone, which sounds exactly <laughs> like something who's this what some <laughs> that a suspicious person would say. There we go. <laughs> There's too I many mean, S's in that sentence. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the Mason stance is that like. We're not doing anything weird. Mm -hmm. We had nothing to do with this. That's always their stance, and we don't know what they actually do, so there's no way to verify that. And then um, that was pretty much, like, the only thing that they would say when Mm -hmm. the guy who wrote the article tried to follow up with them. He just got their, like, token response of what the Mason's motto and mission (sighs) statement is, and it's a whole bunch of nonsense um but yeah so um okay if you want to go to the next slide that is an overview picture of the airport it this is one of those things that's definitely like a confirmation bias to me it um people say that the overhead view the runways basically form the uh nazi swastika um they don't though (laughs) they don't like (laughs) not really like if you're looking for it you could see how they yeah could maybe get that but that top one doesn't even have the doesn't have an arm part no it doesn't like there's extra things and also like it's an international airport they have to have multiple runways mm-hmm. they all have to be going different directions like they're in yeah. mountains it, yeah and denver's it's yeah denver's not it's, flat like it's not like you yeah, can just put it's them wherever definitely, <laughs> it's one of those things that like people put it out there and i looked up the picture and i was like i mean i can see it but if they hadn't if the idea hadn't already been in my head i don't think i would have seen it But yeah, so that's the thing is like if you look at an overhead picture of the runways and you are looking for a swastika, you can see it, but it is not there. That's definitely a confirmation bias in my mind. Um, But it's one of the things that people are like, oh my god, the people who built the airport are neo-Nazis and blah, 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 blah. Which maybe they were, I don't know, but not because of the way they built the runways. Um, And then kind of on that note, there is the theory of the tunnels and the secret underground bunkers that run beneath the airport no one has really seen them um that can be confirmed really um but it's one of those things that like people know there are tunnels under there they just don't really know what's in them, and then the bunkers are what people think are secret, and no one has seen those. But as for the tunnels, um, well, actually for both of them, most conspiracy theorists believe that they're going to be used as a gathering place for government officials and the global elite in the case of some sort of apocalyptic event um either it's going to be nuclear warfare biological warfare um basically anything that you can think of that would cause a dystopia um they think that there's secret bunkers under this airport for the global elite why they would choose this particular (laughs) airport i don't know so um but that's what people say yeah um this is, I promise this is related. 
Um, so I just reread the Hunger Games again, and yeah. the capital of Pan Am is in the Rockies. It doesn't exactly say yeah. where, but it's in the Rockies. And a big part of the third book, whenever they're like actually rebelling and they're trying to take the capital, is they have to get through what they call the nut, and it's basically like they have to crack the nut, is what they say. It's basically mm-hmm. a bunker built into some mountains that they use to keep everything like safe and so I'm wondering if Suzanne Collins like knew about this theory and like incorporated it kind of into the book. I wouldn't be surprised because there's always like any sort of like mountain range people are always like oh I bet there's secret bunkers under there. Yeah Um, isn't there one in Nevada or something? Yeah and then yeah basically if there's any sort of mountain range Mm -hmm. or um (laughs) you know any sort of topography that yeah Illinois doesn't have. <laughs> we are the flattest state on the planet. Yeah. Y'all, I think they're hiding up in that hill. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, anyway, okay, so these secret bunkers and tunnels gonna house the global elite, blah, blah, blah. Um, the one conspiracy theorist I that this guy interviewed, and he's the one that I was like, you're batshit, um, I didn't even bother to take down his name because I think he's crazy, but he (laughs) claims that he saw the tunnels and that they were adorned with the finest gold leaf mosaic artistry he had ever seen. How much Um, of that is he seeing? I don't know. You're fine. Um, He said basically it's like these really big like art pieces that are made with like gold leaf and they're super and it's basically just to entertain the rich people when they're down in these secret tunnels and bunkers and i'm like but no one can confirm that and also why like no one no says that they made this art there's no like okay sorry my cat does not want this podcast (laughs) um my whole thing is as capitalists why would you spend that much money on something that's never going to be like you're wasting money yeah So and like they just, were already so over budget, like that doesn't seem like something they would spend money on. Yeah, it just it just seems weird to me that they would yeah. put like these giant art pieces that are like comparable to what's in the Louvre. Yeah, and then and no one ever sees it. Put it's them in just a bunker. Meant for if the world ends, the yeah, so the rich people can be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can have gold leaf mosaic artistry. Like yeah. why? Also, um, yeah. So, supposedly these, I mean, the tunnels do exist, but as far as bunkers, not really sure. And then yeah. this dude, I don't know, whatever. Um, he went to the sushi thing <laughs> down there. Basically. <laughs> so, some people claim that the tunnels might contain command terminals for, like, the military and, like, nuclear warfare and stuff like that. Um, or even a FEMA concentration camp. That one's a no. (laughs) My thing with that is, like, okay, well, if it was a FEMA concentration camp, first of all, no. But second of all, you would see people being taken in. Yeah, somebody would have by now. Or you could tell by, like, food supply or... Yeah. Like, there's a whole lot of things that would have to go into that. Yeah. Well, and just, like... Just for it to run... So, no, like... FEMA is also, like, notorious for not actually building, like, adequate structures, too. Yeah. So why do they think that now they yeah. can't build something? Yeah, why do they think that back in like the 90s... in 1994, yeah. they built something? No. But, yeah, so the airport staff say that the tunnels um, are leased out to the different airlines as office space, but... People aren't allowed on tours down there because they do tours of the airport or whatever um, for media and conspiracy theorists and all of that. But people aren't allowed on tours down into the tunnels because they're rented out to the airlines. And so it's considered like their private property. So people can't go down there for security reasons. Like, makes sense. Um... But yeah, so one reporter asked the guy who uh, was in charge of, like, the architecture firm that built the building um, if there were any secret tunnels or bomb shelters or bunkers or anything like that. And this guy was, 
I think, just messing with everyone. Um, but he replied, well, I really can't speak to it. I'm sworn to secrecy. <sighs> so, yeah, um, that sounds like but, something somebody was being a smart ass would say. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, like, I don't know what inflection he used, yeah. but it sounds very much like I'm just going to be a smart ass. Because um, I, I feel like if you actually were sworn to secrecy, you would have just said no. There are no secret bunkers right. under the airport. <laughs> exactly. Um, but then he, the guy from the architecture firm, he said that tours of the underground of the airport might start soon, similar to an airport that he had been to in Moscow, where you can tour an area where they were poised to launch a missile strike on America. Um, and that we might know more in 2094 when the time capsule is open. But the airport staff know nothing about any of that. Yeah. So, basically, like, this guy, because he, um, has worked on multiple airports or whatever, he was like, well, once I went on a tour of this airport in Moscow, and they showed us this area where they had, like, a missile launch, Mm -hmm. and it was, uh, blah, blah, blah. And... Something like that might be starting in the Denver airport. And but he's the architect, I, so what the hell would he know? Ugh, excuse right, me. Right, I'm pretty sure he's just trying to mess with conspiracy theorists because... I mean, I would. He, <laughs> that's just what it sounds yeah. like. And then he was like, and we might know more in 2094 when the time capsule is open. Yeah. Like, maybe. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, but. because Beavis and Butthead are really just going to lay it all out. <laughs> right, exactly. There's a lost episode um, of Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, man. so airport staff don't know anything yeah. about any tours or any of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's in the mountains, so it's possible that there's bunkers under there. But yeah. I mean, and obviously, like, when I say the airport staff says this, any conspiracy theorist would be like, well, of course the airport's yeah. going to say that. I just, so, I feel like it would make more sense to have a secret bunker not underneath a functioning airport, like a publicly right. available airport, if that makes sense. I just yeah, I, like it just doesn't make sense. Why would like, you why, want millions of people on top of it? Why would you have a secret place? I mean, I guess hide your secrets in the open, but why? Do you know how hard it is to get to certain areas in the Rockies? Nobody goes to certain areas. Just put it there. You know, like like we have a million deserts. That too. To stick stuff stick in, in a them. desert. Yeah, I like, don't know. You think someone's gonna find something in Texas? Doubt it. Yeah, I just but. I don't know. That just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Because if you want something to be secret, I feel like you don't put it underneath an international airport. Right. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't really. I don't what know. What do I know? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, now, last few slides. If you want to go to the next one. I don't like that guy. We this are is going. This the picture that I know. Okay. Well, first of all, we're going to be talking about these murals. There's. Uh, it's technically two murals, but both of them are in two parts, so there's four. Um, so I put them, like, each part is on its own slide. Uh Um, so this is, like, the first one. Excuse me. Okay. Which, um... Not a fan. Yeah. So, all of like these four murals were all painted by Leo Tanguma I hope I'm saying that right probably not um and he was a local artist in Denver that was uh commissioned by that nun lady mm-hmm. um that nun knew a lot of creepers right? <laughs> uh, she knew artists okay they're weird mm, people creepers <laughs> I think we um, can both be right there <laughs> right um, but yeah, so Leo had done a lot of, like, artwork in the Denver area, um, but he was known for depicting socioeconomic issues, and so that's kind of why they chose him, and basically they kind of gave him the vibe that they wanted in these paintings and just let him do whatever he wanted. What vibe did they um, tell him? <laughs> well, the vibe they wanted... Oh, you know, yay! Um, ...was basically like peace and like that is not peace <laughs> yeah look there's a okay sword. Well, not see, to bring up buttholes every single time but there's a sword up that bird's butt there is there literally is 
Okay, so this painting... Oh, man. ...is called... Uh, let's see, what is this one titled? Children of the World Dream of Peace. This is the first half of it that you are looking at, and it okay. depicts... I mean, uh, if you want to tell me what it depicts, I kind of wrote it out, but if you want to explain it, feel like free. Like a dead baby in a woman's arms. And there's that on the left, and then in the middle is some green Nazi-looking motherfucker with both a rifle and a sword, which, as Hannah already pointed out, the sword is up a white dove's asshole. So... <laughs> And then yeah. there's, like... And there's a bunch of kids sleeping on, like, boxes. Yeah, and then there's, like, a ruined building. Also, I zoomed in on this, and the green guy, his mask looks like it is his actual face, which is just making me think of yeah. that Doctor Who episode, because I just watched it last week. Yeah. So. Are you yeah. my mummy? <laughs> Are you my mummy? Are you my mummy? Yeah, I watched um, that episode while we were losing power from that store. <laughs> not a good idea, Shannon. Oh, I didn't plan it's it out that way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so basically what you said, the children of the world dream of peace, this is the first half of it. It depicts a soldier who looks very much Nazi-ish, um, with a gas mask, and he's holding a sword and a rifle, standing above sleeping children in a, um, city that's destroyed, and he is stabbing the dove of peace. Um, and then also, I don't know if you can see it in the corner on the picture mm-hmm. that I gave you guys but like in the corner there's a letter mm-hmm. um, and that is an actual letter from a child who was in Auschwitz Jesus <laughs> yeah yeah um, but but if you go to the next slide that's... wait before we go Yes. Look, if you blow that picture up and look towards the, like, bayonet on that gun in the corner, do you see that orb? I do see an orb, yeah. 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 Is it on? <laughs> I'd believe it. But yeah, so if you go to the next slide, this is the other half of this mural. Um, and they're they're done in, like, separate paintings, but they technically go together as one, but you can't always tell that because they are in like separate areas um but this other half of the painting shows a diverse group of people celebrating over the corpse of the soldier from the first painting with two doves that are resting on top of the soldier's gun so the artist uh leo he claims that the piece represents a biblical lesson from isaiah and micah um, and that lesson is that it's possible for nations of the world to stop war by joining together. Um, and that the children in the paintings are dreaming of peace in a world filled with war. Okay. <laughs> so All their flags like, are wrapping up the... Swords and stuff. Yeah. The swords. And it's also the people who are together are like the people the kids standing next to each other that have the swords wrapped up are kids that have conflicts like the countries have conflicts with Mm -hmm. with each other so there's um there's the uk and ireland there's russia and the u.s and there's palestine and israel that i see Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so like when you see them together and you read the artist's like note on it like i get it but also this is an airport. Like, <laughs> this is an airport, and that first painting with zero context. Yeah. Like, why is there a Nazi killing children? Yeah. Seriously. So it's very, it's very. Yeah. Weird. It's just weird. I don't know how I feel about this. And very dark. Yeah. And weird to put in an airport. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just. It's odd. Yeah. And the fact that there's. Oh, another set uh, <laughs> that are just as odd it's just kind of like why um but one kind of like side note on this one in the the like peace happy side or part of the mural um there's a section with young people that are dressed in 90s fashion um i believe it said it was at the top but let me see Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. right at the top. Yeah, like, yeah. right at the top. Hair. So, those are actual children from Denver, um, and 
they are portraits of actual kids that had died from gang violence in Denver. So, like, it's, like, I get what he was trying to do, but I don't, I, well, yeah, it's weird. This might be going too far into it, but, like, gang violence and wars are not the same thing. They're right, very, like, very different things. He, it was like he tried to fit too many ideas yeah. into one painting. Yeah. And, like, I get that socioeconomic issues is, like, your M.O. as an artist, but you're painting for an airport terminal. Yeah. I we just don't... don't go so dark with it. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah, and, like, I'm not saying he shouldn't be making a tribute to children who die by gang violence, but, like... They are separate issues, and so it's just, I don't know. I feel like you could have made one yeah. about gang violence, and it would have been, Well, and you, you could know? have made a mural about, like, children dreaming of peace yeah. without a Nazi killing yeah. the dove. Yeah. Like, or without any Nazis at all. They don't need to be there at all. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's very odd. Um, yeah. Is it racist that the Irish kid is a redhead? <laughs> I mean, Just wondering. do you think it is? <laughs> You're the Irish one here. Yeah. Offended. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to move to the next painting. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. What the fuck? These are by the same guy. Um, Holy shit. Again, this is the dark side of this pair of paintings. Um... Let's see, what are these ones titled? These ones are called In Peace and Harmony with Nature. So, do you want to describe this one or do you just want me to? Uh, dead kids and animals all over. There's basically. a lot of animals that look taxidermied, I guess, that are in, like, glass boxes. There's a forest fire. Uh-huh. And also they're sacred animals, yeah. like the yeah. Quetzal and the Buffalo, and I think that's a Jaguar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're like sacred, except for I don't know what the squirrel is for, but... It might be sacred <laughs> to somebody. Maybe, yeah, I, I don't know. know. Yeah, but... Yeah. yeah. And then there's a yeah, there's so a few children who look horrified. Hi, hon! Uh-huh. Hi, May. Yeah, and there's like caskets in the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, dead kids and... Yeah. Yeah, so basically it's a scene of fire and chaos. Large tree trunks are on fire and women and children are shown fleeing from the fire while carrying extinct animals in glass containers. Um, There's also two bodies in caskets, a dead tortoise, and the ribcage of a large animal located in the foreground. Um, But if you go to the next slide, that's the other half of the painting. Who's the person in the middle supposed to be? Uh, it's just a child. Um, in the middle, dead? Yeah, yeah. they look kind of goddessy, but... Yeah, they look older, yeah. too. Like an adult. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't say. Um, because it just said like that it's, like, women and children native. who are fleeing. But then, yeah, I thought that was weird, too. When I originally looked at it, I was like, she doesn't really look like she's fleeing, but... Okay. Yeah. She looks like a Native American. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so the second half of the painting, this is like, I guess the happy side of it. Um, it shows happy children from around the world coming together in celebration with, uh, animal, with live animals frolicking in the background. Um, so according to the Denver airport website, they said that the first half of the mural depicts children displaying great sadness over the destruction and extinction of life as the second half depicts humanity coming together to rehabilitate and celebrate nature this one so i don't like either one of them this one seems more appropriate somehow yeah this one's a bit more straightforward of like you can tell that like things are on fire they're like yeah taking these extinct animals in taxidermy cases and blah, yeah. blah, 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 and then like they're celebrating with like the live things they all came together and blah, yeah this blah, one's blah. definitely my preferred yeah of the two. yeah yeah like this one the story makes more sense yeah 
Um, but, yeah, that first one with the soldier and dreaming of peace. Because, like, even the happy side of the children dreaming of peace one, like, they're celebrating over the dead body of a soldier. Yeah. Like, it's it's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's Which, just, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the murals themselves just freak people out more than anything. I mean, well, there yeah, are they're theories fucking weird. around them. But again, it's people who are like, oh, this is the airport, or like the people who own the airport claiming like the war and blah, 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 blah. I don't even know. Uh, it's a lot of nonsense that... Can you imagine you have, like, a 4 a.m. flight, and you have to walk past <laughs> uh-huh. that, and you're so tired? Oh, God. Like, yeah. so many nightmares. I don't think I went past these. Um, I think I would remember these. Although I don't remember jack shit, so what do I know? I don't think we went I past these. these. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's... I mean... And the airport is under construction, and so one of them i think the children dreaming of peace one is um in storage right now while they do construction but um yeah it's just they're just weird yeah more than anything like again i'm all for artists having free reign to do what they want and like i'm glad that they went with a diverse group of people to do the art around because I mean there's paintings all over the airport Mm -hmm. and they have like a whole art section like if you've ever been to the Atlantic airport they have them um down by where their like subway is but and there's a lot of like really good art down there Mm -hmm. these are just the ones that were these are like permanent installations and they're just they're so weird Mm -hmm. and dark that it really throws people off. Like, I've been to several United States airports. I don't Mm -hmm. remember, like, you see art, but you don't remember any of it because you're in a fucking airport. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, The one I do remember, just to say, was at, shit, where were we? We are in Houston, I think? I don't remember. But it was just a statue of George W. Bush. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was it. That was the only Uh thing I remember. Um... Yeah, but, like, like, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. Like, yeah, I've been to a lot of airports. I don't remember the art from any of them, and I feel like that's how it's supposed to be because you're in an airport. It's kind of supposed to be, like, hotel art. Yeah, exactly. It's supposed to be, like, hotel art. That or it's, like, the ones in Atlanta are, like, installations, so it's, like, because you know how, I I mean. I've been to the Atlanta airport. I've been to the Atlanta airport, but, like, when you're going between concourses you take that little subway or whatever Uh um if you don't take that and you walk it instead um between the subway stops those walkways are all different like art installations and they have one that's like african art and then they have one that's like it's a rainforest immersive experience type thing and um one is like sculptures and so i mean it's like they make sense they're things yeah. for you to look at or experience as you're walking because you're walking not really art. far it's not a museum yeah all the art here is really dark and like sinister yeah yeah well also like, being it's just so fucking colorful that it's kind of like trippy and i don't like it yeah it's like really jarring yeah that's a good look at because you're like you're like this is really dark and weird but like also there's a rainbow behind yeah. this soldier so it's like just, what is going yeah, on yeah it's just weird the artist who did them he is chicano so i don't know if that has anything to do with i can see more of an influence on that on the second one yeah i'm not but, personally really seeing it with the first one but again what do i know so <laughs> and like a lot of his art is inspired by like mexican muralists yeah like he was inspired by like um rivera rosco sequeros um so like you can see a lot but it's one of those things where like 
okay, if you know the artist's background, if you read the little tiny plaque that says, like, the artist's viewpoint of what he painted, sure, I can see the story. But I had to read it to see the story. Yeah. At least with the first one with the soldier. The one where it's, like, the animals and stuff, that one's a bit more straightforward, yeah. but... So, yeah, yeah that... I just don't know that I would put pictures of dead children in an airport. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's very weird, I... and obviously, like, there's a lot of stuff about these paintings, and the artist, like, refused to talk about mm-hmm. it. I just have a... I was like, I don't want to. I have a really quick question. So, is each half of these, are they, like, near each other? So that you could... That I don't Okay, know. so that you could know that they're part of the same thing? Yeah, that... You have to go to every I... <laughs> Don't okay. know. Okay, I was just wondering. They're, I'm pretty sure, like, the two halves are in the same terminal okay. as each other. Yeah, because I can see the flooring, um, like, the floor looks the same, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. They probably face each other. Yeah, probably. Okay, I was just wondering, because, like, these pictures aren't really good at telling you, like, obviously, like, where they are in the airport. Yeah, that's my thing, is, like, I couldn't really find a distinct thing that said, like, where exactly okay. they're located. Okay, I was just wondering. Um, because that would be even but, fucking yeah. funnier if they weren't anywhere near each other. <laughs> right, if they were in completely separate yeah. terminals oh, man. of the airport. That'd be hilarious. No, it wouldn't. That'd be terrible. Yeah. But, um, Ugh. but yeah, I mean, that's all I've got. Okay. So. Well. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a quick overview <laughs> of the Denver airport. It would have been quick if Not we would have shut I mean, up. <laughs> I kind of really just touched on, like, yeah. the major ones that people talk about or, like, weird things that, um, are, like, the main weird things in the airport, but obviously there's a lot of, like, smaller things because anytime there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding one area or one place, people go hog wild with yeah. it, but... Um, oh my god, it's almost 10 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> it is uh, three minutes until my bedtime. Yeah, so. I'm gonna go get ice cream and candy from the corner store because I want ice cream, damn it. <laughs> Do it. Did that after my I got, yeah, trip. I got insulted by the property manager guy today, so yeah. You deserve some ice I know. cream, both of you. To do. be fair, I did tell him to fuck off, but still. <laughs> He deserved it. <laughs> uh, he did deserve it. So. Um, All right, then. But yeah, Yay. So. We still don't have a fucking sign-off. Oh, my God. I keep oh forgetting to God. do it or to even think about it until we're actually recording. <laughs> right. Literally, we get to the end, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we should have thought God. about it. God. I'm going to, as soon as we're done recording and I can find my phone in this pitch black room of mine, I'm going to send a message to the group chat to <laughs> come up with an ending so <sighs> you will remember yeah tomorrow hopefully when i wake up well when i wake up i'm calling my property management company so <laughs> nice. uh. um, all right all righty okay well hopefully at the very least we'll just get less awkward with just saying bye that would be nice right yeah <laughs> uh, what's the diameter of your <laughs> <laughs> that's right i have to check your math uh um, Cool. Bye, friends. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Triad. Our music is by Scott Buckley. Our audio was recorded by our studio engineer, Craig Bott. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr as The Triad Podcast. Our website is thetriadpodcast.wordpress.com. There you can find information about our latest episode, including the show notes and sources. We're also on Patreon as The Triad. Currently, all Patreon funds will go towards the costs of hosting the show. Each tier has its own rewards, but every patron receives our undying gratitude. If you have comments, questions, or stories, email us at thetriadpod at gmail.com. Thank you again for listening to The Triad, where we're spooky but sensitive.